So I approved, I, I approved my girl. I finally was just like, okay, we can, we can make this work. And I, I gave her the, you know, so we'll do 8,000 now prorated rent first. And then, you know, she'll have her first month's rent due in uh, May. And then um, we're doing a $3,000 note um, plus uh, the 150% on the rent um, additional. So she'll, they'll pay an additional $400 for, and we'll give, you know, 150% towards rent assistance or, or towards the down payment assistance. Yeah, so we do it all separate on a completely separate contract. Um, so I got, so they're all good with that. So we're going to do the signing, I think on Friday. And then I had another guy that saw the house that really, really loved it, but I hadn't heard from him. And so finally he calls him back and he's like, okay, I got 15,000 down and I can give you another 10 in six months. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, that's a situation where I would tell Brandy to like start working that $15,000 guy and tell him, look, we got this other buyer coming in, but you know, if you want the house, we'll make it work for you. And she would hate to do it. But if this other guy came in with 15 grand, we would tell the original people, Hey, sorry. Like it's Seriously? a tough conversation, but even though you yeah. collected a thousand dollar. Yeah. We'd non- give that back to him. You would just. <sighs> it depends. It depends. It's all case by case. Right. Like, if this is your a friend of a friend on Facebook or something you're dealing with and, and it's going to ruin your life, then don't do that, obviously. No. Uh, if it's a thing where it's like literally the morning of they're moving in, I wouldn't do that. You know, right. but right now it's Tuesday and they're talking about, fit, you know, Friday move in or uh, signing at least. When's yeah, this $15,000 guy want to move in? Same time. Friday? Cool. Or he's going to want us to come in and sign on Friday? No, yeah, he, he'll he sign anytime, and he's ready to move in effective May 1. Well, first step is to get him financially committed with a $2,000 hold fee that's non-refundable. But I already have a hold fee from, from this other family, and I've already said yes to them. So you're saying that I would just go to them and say, hey, guys, sorry, I got another, I got a better prospect, and you're out? <laughs> I'm struggling with that, Blair. I wish Brandy was on here. She could tell you the words she uses. It do, it's, it's not as bad as that sounds, partially because the because way we set you, up the you... expectations with the buyer. So if you've told the buyer, oh, yeah, you're moving in on Friday or whatever, like as soon as you sign, like if you've already had the deal meeting with them and all this sort of thing. I've already given them their, um, I've already given them their receipt for the $1,000 non-refundable deposit to hold the house. Okay. Okay. And then I've given them the, um, what's the other one? The, uh, um, it, it spells out all the terms. The letter of intent? Yes. The letter of intent. Okay. So just to be clear, the application receipt agreement essentially allows you to keep the house on the market until they actually come in and sign and pay. It allows me to keep the house on the market? Yeah, you can still keep marketing the house for other buyers because once they come in and sign and pay, it's not a done deal until it's done. I thought that the other letter says that we will no no longer that it's this is your this is a non refundable thousand dollar deposit because we're no longer going to be marketing the property because we're agreeing to go with you. No, that's not what it says. Okay, Mm -hmm. I got I got to read that again. I guess. Yeah. Essentially. The application receipt agreement says, hey, we're going to take this $1,000 from you. This basically holds a spot for you subject to approval of your application. And that approval of the application is in your sole discretion. So it could very well be that you then disapprove their application because it's not as good as another application you just got from another buyer. You're going to give you their money back. Mm-hmm. And I think you tell them that. I think you say, listen, you guys understand the real estate market. It's, you know, there's a, a low supply and a high demand. And, you know, frankly, we've got somebody more qualified than you who wants to buy it. And they're ready to move at the same pace. So, you, you know, we, we had you in first, but 
these these are the economics of the real estate industry in the U.S. today. You know, and, five years from now, it'll be different. You might be surprised. They may go and come up with come another up with more money. Yeah, they will more money. Seriously. Uh huh. Okay. But you don't do it as if you're negotiating. You just tell them, based on the economics, everybody understands this is a hot real estate market everywhere, <clears throat> right? And you just tell them, this is the, the basics. This is the underlying economics. And I'm sorry, but we're going to have to go with somebody more qualified. And then let them sell you on why you still need to go with them. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I can tell Dawn does not like this idea. I I just I blacker feel bad. heart, blacker I, heart, bigger balls. You know, we live in a pretty Water. small community, and I'm not I'm not trying to like tarnish my, you know, reputation by doing well, okay. like what, feeling like that, I'm. Don, you're a real estate investor. What kind of reputation do you think you got out there? Come on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Come on. Let's well, I just I can't ourselves. imagine how that would feel to me if that happened to me. If somebody said, "Okay, you got the house," and I'm like, hey, this, "This family is excited. They're thrilled. They really wanted this house. It's like their dream, right?" And so I tell them yes, and now I'm going to say, "Sorry, guys, I got someone better qualified," and so you no longer get the house. Like that just feels awful to me. Well, what if well, you you got to do, do what you're comfortable with? If you want to yeah. leave money on the table and do that, then do it. <laughs> what if you what if you offered to give them a, an extra thousand dollars back just for their trouble? Would that make you sleep better at night? Because I think that's the only issue here is you sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think it would help if you read the contract that you're signing. You know, I, I think that would make a, a big difference. Um, because like Blair said, that the intent is different than what you're assuming. Right. Uh, I'm okay. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I haven't read it in a while, so I don't know why I was thinking that for some for some reason I was thinking that we would stop marketing the property once we approved no. our buyer. No. Mm -mm. Okay. We don't stop until they come in and sign and pay, and even sign. then maybe. It's not a deal until it's a deal. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. But you got at the end of the day, you got to do what your conscience tells you to do. Right. Learn, I've just done enough of these things that we know that, you know, this is a normal thing. It happens in the regular side. Realtors do it all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah you gave you gave full price and we had an escrow, but somebody came in 5000 bucks more and the seller's going to take it. Yeah. Okay. And don't rule out the possibility that these $8,000 buyers that you're so worried about, you know, ruining their lives or whatever, they will do it to you if they had the motive and opportunity. <laughs> Yeah. Like at some point down the road, they just got a new job and they're just going to abandon your house. They wouldn't think twice about it. Mm -hmm. You can also approach it of, I've got this problem and maybe we can talk about how to solve it. Okay. And you just tell yeah. them what the deal is and let them say. Hmm. Tell them like it is. And they're, okay. and they're part of the decision making process. Right. You know, what would you do if you were in my spot, Mr. Buyer? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can see. Yeah, double the amount of money plus ten more down the road. Right. I, I understand your problem. Let me. Yeah. Could I come up with maybe a little bit more than eight? Blair's right. Most of the time, those people will find <clears throat> more They'll money. They'll figure it out. They will figure it out. Mm -hmm. But only if they have to, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you pay right. you know twenty twenty four taxes today? You could. Right. But if you don't have to, why would you? Okay. Okay. All right. Maybe I'll let Jim do it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> He's better at it than me. I'm too, I'm too much of a softy. Yeah. Sounds like That's it. why I let him do all the negotiating and, and the acquisitions. I just do the opening call and the behind the scene organizing and all the, you know, marketing and that's my job. I do all that because yeah. I'm too much of a, yeah. I'm too much of a wuss. I'm, I'm too I, concerned about everybody else's feelings. Yeah. I would definitely let Jim take these calls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't spend your time worrying about other people's feelings if you realize how seldom they think about you. Yeah. I know. Yeah. 
<laughs> I just, I'm just trying to let you sit with it a little bit there. I'll have to, uh, I'll, this is going to get posted, right? I'll have Jim come back and yeah. listen to this because yeah. he'll be like, I told you so. <laughs> yeah. So he, he would be with us, wouldn't he? He'd be oh, on yeah. Our side. Yeah. Yeah. He, he didn't want to agree to the other people to begin with. He said that we needed to hold out and wait. Yeah. Wait for well, more money. And there's a lot to be said for that. And then Seriously. it bites me in the ass because he tells me that. And then I'm like, okay, no, we're not getting any other bites. We need to close on this. I've got this fire. They're good candidates. They have good income. You know, they got good careers. They're in industries I don't have to worry about. And so I'm just going to make a decision and we're going to go with them. And then like, <laughs> and then like literally a day after. Well, that, that is a good question, though. So this other buyer who's got 15 down, what's his income? He's got good you know, income. He's got good income. He's in, he, he has a ton of – so I'm a little bit confused, actually, but he's got a ton of credit cards, but they're all, like, small balances that he needs to get paid, and he's got a huge student loan. He's, he's got a doctorate, doctorate – what is that? Doctor's – doctorate's degree? What the hell? I don't even know. I can't even talk. Oh. <laughs> a doctorate? Is that what you say? Yeah. Yeah, yeah doctorate's, doctorate's degree. Doctorate's yeah. he's degree. Got a PhD. Yes, he's yeah. got a PhD, so okay. he's got a huge student loan. Um, but he makes really good income. And um and his I don't know if it's his boyfriend or what, but he makes really good income too. So there's two of them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean so, that is a factor. Have you taken their application yet? Have you processed? Yeah, I get yeah, okay. I got their application. They went through the screening and um Okay. They are qual. They it says the screening department says that they should have no trouble getting their financing within twelve to eighteen months. Great. So. All right. Well, and the reason I was asking is because yeah, he might have more down payment, but he might not be as good of a buyer as your eight eight grand person. Right. Yeah, he's you know? he's equally as good of a buyer. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'd have Jim listen to this call and then just. Tell, but see, here's the deal. You don't you don't want to tell your current buyer anything until these guys are like committed, locked. like locked in financially, Money. like with the a two thousand, three thousand dollar hold fee, the non refundable. You see what I mean? Yeah. So you're saying I have a non refundable hold fee from my first one, and you're saying for that the second one I should get a non refundable hold fee, and then like and then go and back and tell one. the other people that I have another candidate. Yeah, because what you don't want to do is go tell the eight grand people to take a hike and then the 15 guy ghosts you. Then you're screwed. So now I'm putting them both on the – on. now I'm getting them both excited. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm consider. I'm uh, heavily considering it now that we've got some additional damage that needs to be fixed. I'm like, eh. yeah, yeah, seriously. Okay. See, so so even get a five thousand dollar hold fee. You know, the more the better. And mm -hmm. I've heard Ron Legrand talk about, you know, when he's dealing with a buyer, uh, he'll talk about the hold fee, and the buyer will ask, well, how much do you need for the hold fee? And he'll just say, you know, well, we usually just go ahead and collect the whole option fee right now. Right. And he'd give you, they, they could give you $15,000 right now. And I wouldn't say no to that as their hold fee. Okay. Especially in this scenario, because you're about to tell this other buyer to take a hike. Right. Yeah, you take that, the dialogue we just had, and you reverse it with your new buyer. Hey, I already mm -hmm. got somebody in the place. <clears throat> you know, they're kind of equivalent to you. They were there first. I want to go with you, but. You know, I'm concerned that you will poop out at the finish line. So, um, you know, how can we fix that? Let them come up with that solution. Or, mm -hmm. you know, we, we can fix that by you sending your money to escrow or sending your money to us. And then, you know, then I, I'll, you know, work it out with the, the previous buyer. Okay. And I'll work it out with the previous buyer. Okay. This could be a win, 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 win situation if you do it right. right. Especially if you had another house. You yeah. put one of those buyers in another house. Okay. Bad news, good news. I can't give you this one, but I got one better. I do have another one that we're, we have a meeting. We have a meeting with them on Thursday. 
that could potentially be a fit for these guys, but I don't know. I mean, yeah. Okay. You, you want to keep even, them in the glue until yeah. you, until, you know, until they buy or die. Right. You just stay with them. You could even sweeten the deal for the $8,000 buyers. If they didn't 100% love this other house that you got, they mm -hmm. only got eight, just tell them, look, I'll give you, you know, we'll still do the eight grand down, but I'll give you a $10,000 credit for that eight grand. So you just sweeten the deal by giving them something that has, doesn't cost you anything. Right. You see okay. what I mean? Right.